Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to test your smart contract, your Solidity smart contract uh, by fuzzing. So the approach I'm going to explain here is called property test, uh, property testing. So what does it do? If you are unfamiliar with fuzzing and testing in general, so I can give you you know a brief orientation here. Uh, fuzzing um, essentially um, is a um, well-known approach among cybersecurity researchers, hackers, um, even you know senior uh, engineers. So it has been used for a long time, especially for system programming, you know, for for low-level programs, um, for operating system compilers, and all kind of you know software like that. Um, however, it's relatively new and unknown um, in basically in crypto in blockchain uh, community. And the reason why is, is it hasn't been used that much so far here. Uh, for example, if you take a look at you know top-notch uh, blockchain audit companies and the audit reports, you rarely actually see fuzzing results. They mostly are like static analyzes uh, result, which actually is not quite accurate because in a static ap approach. You've got to uh, read the code manually or use some sort of tools, but this is just everything is offline and is a static. Um, actually, when you um, want to see the accurate, you know, the, the most accurate behavior of your program, your smart contract, uh, you need to test that with concrete data at runtime, especially when, when it's deployed on network and testnet, mainnet, places like that. Uh, to see how your actually smart contract, um, you know, behave and uh, react to to basically runtime data, which is accurate. There is no uh, over approximation here. Um, whereas in a static analysis, uh, we don't know exactly what we receive in real world. Therefore, we need to, for example, approx we need to basically do perform some sort of approximation and say, okay, if the input is like that, perhaps we have brain transfer here. If, if that is happening, perhaps you have this bug or that bug. That's why the reports are not that much accurate and quite frankly, based on my experience, the static analysis is not as efficient as at runtime analysis because at runtime, um, basically you can uh, identify tricky behavior, tricky bugs, very sophisticated bugs that you, it's very difficult or it's impossible to, to basically predict them and find them by just reading code, okay? So, uh, in this you know, regard, we have a technique, it's called fuzzing. In general, it's, it's an approach and we have m multiple branches in fuzzing. There are different ways of performing fuzzing. So, fuzzing in general means, hey, we need to uh, introduce different inputs to a program, uh, to a process when you compile a program, and in order to see what is its behavior and how we can make some crashes or identify some bugs or panics or uh, memory violations or hacks and things like that. So we try to, you know, give different inputs, random input to see how it works. So as you can see, you know, in this picture, one of the basic ways, one of the earlier approaches of or fuzzing approaches is called monkey testing. So monkey testing means just randomly giving different inputs, you know, headlessly without any uh, any consumption about the program itself. When, uh, you receive some binaries or some deployed code or something like that and uh, you don't know okay what's going on what is the source code what's going on inside of that and you just want to give different inputs to crash program and uh, and then identify attribute that that input particular input to the crash and that uh, then allow you to exploit that with different ways okay so um, so this is a kind of history about fuzzing in general, about program in, in software engineering in general. Uh, this approach, I mean, fuzzing programs, as I mentioned earlier, isn't that much popular at the moment of writing this video among uh, blockchain developers because it's relatively new and we don't have that much tools out there. So there are a lot of works and it's actually quite sophisticated. I mean, we don't have that much sophisticated developers out there at the moment yet, right? So that makes sense. However, in this video, I'm going to show you uh, through a simple you know, example um, how you can actually perform fuzzing for your contract. The approach today we're gonna use is not uh, monkey testing. Uh, it's called property testing. And property testing is one of the fuzzing approaches. So here, um, in property testing or property-based fuzzing, 
we feed actually our smart contract with random data in order to identify bugs there, okay and vulnerabilities there uh, why this approach is actually better for example than previous one than monkey testing because it allows also developers to identify and check custom correctness and safety policies you know um, based on their own tests okay so here we do have better insight and presumably we can actually extract more vulnerability however in this example i'm gonna give you just the general way to perform property based based fuzzing you know on your code and one of the frameworks i'm gonna use to make things to accelerate basically the whole process is called echidna okay which is free open source basically framework so i put the links and other information uh here in, you know in the description of this video so let's get us started and write our contract and uh, start fuzzing this uh, let's write our contract so because i'm gonna show you how it works so this this is for um, you know for the sake of simplicity i make a very simple minimalistic contract here but of course you can apply the approach for uh, more sophisticated DeFi contracts staking contracts uh, and uh, different basically uh, stuff you have but anyway this is gonna be very simple so i make a contract i call this uh, let's say deep deep uh, and I define one local state here and uh, it's gonna be uint uh, public and uh, name is like members very simple so I don't want to spend too much time for writing code here I make a function function add uh, member and very simple now just um, incrementing actually something to this local state so then member uh, is gonna be increment by one and then i have um, let me make it external so we can work that out of contract then we have another function remove member it's gonna be external it doesn't return anything and here we do Um, yeah that's it quite simplistic contract um, now I'm gonna make my basically uh, testing contract that inherit basically hips it okay so I write con another contract in the same file and uh, I call this test uh, or maybe fuzz um, hips it All right, so now I finished my simplistic contract. Now I'm going to write the uh, testing of fuzzing contract for that. So I make another contract and I call this fuzz uh, heap zip, which is uh, inherited from uh, heap zip here. And uh, then uh, inside of that, I make my own uh, fuzzing function. So because I use uh, Kitna framework, uh, I've got to put, you know, a specific uh, prefix, prefix here which start this prefix is kid now and then the name of the function whatever you like so I can say pause and uh, let's say um, um, add member something like that or just pause members something like this quite simple and this function needs to be public and view and returns boolean okay. so what i say i said okay return uh, members uh, less than let's say um, um, less than 10 okay something like this just a simple test here All right, now uh, we are going to run our test here and perform the fuzzing, uh, you know, uh, function. So in order to do that, uh, we can either set up, you know, uh, a kid on our local machine. Uh, the other way around is to take advantage of his Docker, 
Yeah. So in this video, because I want to show you everything uh, uh, in an easy way, um, I actually use this Docker, uh, which is fast for here. But you can also download, you know, it's open source, so you can download that, you can compile that, and set up, you know, dependencies and uh, run that on your machine. <coughs> so, um, uh, in order to use Docker, make sure that you, uh, the Docker actually is up and running, on, Docker service is up and running on your machine. Um, then type docker run um, it uh, then, um, of m and uh, we want to load our folder here uh, into docker so we call this v or volume and uh, the address is going to be current directory slash and the folder I have here if you see now and um, the image name is trail of bits um, mth security two box there we go now we have it so uh So first we go to our uh, local basically uh, folder if So now let's get us started with Echidna. Echidna test. So we have it here. Okay, Echidna test and uh, the name of the file, which is sample sold. And inside of the file, file we have this basically contract that holds our test. So then we need to say, okay, <coughs> which contract here? Target contract. Let me say it, contract. And the name of that is Foz. Okay, like that. And as you can see here, it failed because members actually uh, exceed this one. So it's not going to be less than 10. You can write another function that doesn't fail, for instance, function. Um, it now uh, falls um, true just for fun it always return true and uh, it's gonna be public view returns boom here and it just return true just uh, to show you how it looks As you can see, this is under testing. Uh, this one failed.
it takes a while actually uh, it's for 50,000 we cannot change this number here for more sophisticated tests when we want to put more uh, time uh, for different conditions so let me terminate that here and uh, let's say um, this time we want to limit that to just a small smaller number or even bigger number uh, so for doing that I limit the test I use this parameter test limit and instead of I don't know 50,000 I just say 1,000 or 100 okay 1,000 is okay and let run this again so here you can see we go 1,000 tests you can put 1 million tests actually and sometimes it might take different results but not in this case of course it's quite obvious so yeah, that was it. I hope you enjoy uh, this video and you learned uh, about the kit now. So you can actually apply that for different property and uh, uh, basically find uh, tricky bugs and vulnerabilities in your code. So if you like this video, please don't uh, uh, forget to <laughs> give it a like, subscribe the channel and check out my social media and you can check actually uh, my GitHub. Thank you very much for your attention and see you soon. Bye-bye.